to Lisa Marvin Art. This is Blooms 101 or Blooms, Easy Blooms for people who don't want to mix stuff, I guess. Um, there's lots of different recipes for the bloom and to really do the best bloom, I would suggest taking the Shelly Art class um, so you can find perfect ratios and wonderful recipes and a great Facebook group. But um because it's really even if i show you a recipe it's really hard to do on your own without help that i know however i wanted to for beginners who want to give it a try um i want to do the easiest bloom recipe possible so the sneakers your sneakers say hi to your fans hello i like doing blooms okay don't pee anywhere please um oop. so i'm using north american Floetrol and Payne's Gray, and that's it. Um, a lot of recipes add different things, but uh, I want to keep it as simple as possible. It's not gonna look, it's gonna look a little different, uh, but it is possible to do. I don't even have wood conditioner, that's one of the things that they add. Sneakers, stop eating that. <laughs> um, so let's get going. So I'm going to try the ratio I'm going to try because it's not really about ratios. It's about um, consistencies, which you will learn. So let's shake her up a bit. And I think I'll start with a five to one ratio with Payne's Gray. Now, sneakers. Hold on. Get out of here. Out, out, out. He's eating my plastic floor. Okay. Um... I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, Payne's gray or black is much easier with Floetrol uh, than white. I have done a white, I might add it, but let's start with what we know, what looks good, or hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna do five to one. Oops, four, it's a little more than five, but we'll see what happens. Luckily, I got this Floetrol before all the batches that went rancid. Okay, no more. Okay, so we're looking for a good consistency, not too thick, not too thin. Keep mixing. All right, let's see. All right, that looks good. Um, you can see, ooh, you can see when you do a little circle, it stands up for a few seconds. That's what you want. Now, I have my pouring medium here. Um, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what I use because you'll have to take the Shelly Art class for that, but it's, this is three parts tintable tip paint to one part gloss. Um, let's start. Oh, I'm going to do a color palette that worked well for me yesterday. Uh, this is, uh, iridescent blue black PBO. I really like, so let's measure. How do I measure? I do bloops or blueberries. So this is about two ounces of pouring medium and let's start with two blueberries, a big blueberry one, two, I guess they're not really blueberries. What kind of fruit would they be? So we're looking for a nice consistency. This might be a tad thick actually, but you see how it stays up? It stays up longer than your cell activator. That's what you want. Okay. Next, uh, we're gonna go PBO Violet Blue. I really like these iridescents, especially if you don't wanna mess with um, pigments because those are a little harder and they have a nice iridescent sparkle to them okay next i really like this atelier red black now you want to make sure because all these paints have different consistencies so you want to make the pouring mediums all similar so the amount of paint that you add uh, will depend on the thickness. So this I know is thicker than that. So I put less in 
and we still have a similar consistency to the other ones. And then finally, we will use one of my favorite colors, which I haven't used in a while, which is this uh, Liquitex, Liquitex gouache, fluorescent violet, love it. Now this is thinner than the others, so let's see. The consistency in that. Okay, so it holds up nicely. That's what you want. Okay, those are my colors. Here's my cell activator. You have to make sure to mix it up really well. All right. Uh, the pillow paint, the first layer that I'm using is Sherwin Williams Color to Go. I really like it because that's straight from the bottle too. So, so far we have minimal mixing, easy peasy. Let's go over to the turntable and see what happens. Okay, so I got my little four inch poster here. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit, so you don't wanna put too much paint on your coaster or else it will crack. I'm gonna say maybe two ounces. Not really measure, but let's just spread it around so it blows out nicely. Okay, so with the gray cell activator. I'm gonna start with that PBO blue black, I think it's called. Okay. Then I will do the fluorescent to break up the PBOs. And then I will do the pink. I don't think I'm going to do the black because I don't want it to be too dark. Just messily get it on there. All right, let's get it back in the middle. So put a little bit of this cell activator on. See what happens. Okay. For the cells to come out. It's a little black in the middle, but I'm hoping it will do something that I like. The edges have nice cells to them, if you can see. All right, so I'm gonna wait a minute for that to, to come together, but that's not looking so horrible. Meanwhile, why don't I try one with white? Um, so what I did for the white is I did two parts glue. Where did I put my other coaster? Um, I did two parts glue to two parts Floatrol and one part Amsterdam titanium white. Um, we'll see how that goes. Just, I don't want to waste too much paint on these. Okay. Get the edges going. I really like these hexagon tiles, but they're hard to find. I got these at Home Depot because they didn't have regular ones. Uh, okay, so for this one, I'll add the black because I'm doing white cell activator, so it might be interesting. So I'll go PBO. I will go PBO. The black's looking pretty good. 
Um, I will go a little bit of black. We'll see how the white does. I'll go violet. And we'll do another white. Oops. So the white's gonna look different. much cell action there, is it? All right, we'll wait for the white to settle and then I will spin, spinny spin this guy. So it's looking good. I don't know why he's a he, but Not so horrible. You want to make sure you get as much paint off as possible so it dries uh, evenly. Get those sides. Maybe I'll spin it one more time. And you can tell by moving it. It's not moving that much. It's pretty good. Go a little. All right, that's pretty cute. I like it. Okay, let's see this disastrous white. What's happening over here? Uh, let's put this down flat. Okay, now, you're curious, aren't you? So, it's strange. Uh, have to work on the white one a bit more. Black is always easier. I mean, if you like this sort of thing, it's not horrible. And as it dries, the lines will get smaller. It's kind of cute. I'm not gonna hate on her. Make sure all the paint's off. And then yeah, I mean, not so bad. I might have blown on that a little bit more, the white spot, but I think over time, as it dries, it will sink in. So let's look at the gray and the white together. Obviously, the grays and blacks work a little better with nothing else in them. But here they are. I'll do a close-up for you. Oh, don't mind this one. This was just my garbage one. There, see, garbage. Uh, they're cute, little guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.